Hey folks, welcome to the uh, five minute pre-show of uh, Grab a Stack of Rock here tonight on Friday, June the 16th. Um, first, we're just going to address the immediate obvious elephant in the room, which is why do I look like I got hit by a truck and like I'd rather be anywhere but here. Well, folks, uh, the only reason we're live tonight is because uh, of my wife, Jen, who didn't insist, but preferred that I continue to go live tonight with the show. Um, at around quarter after four this afternoon, I'd been working, hadn't really been paying attention to my phone, a lot going on at work. And uh, then I realized I hadn't received a text message from Jen in uh, over an hour, which is very unusual for her. And um, so I, I, I called her cell phone and um, uh, always my favorite thing when a voice that isn't my wife's answers my wife's cell phone. And it was a paramedic. And uh, I don't know the details yet. I don't know the whole story yet, but uh, she had some kind of seizure and fell, I think, on a sidewalk from what I gather. And uh, she's at the hospital right now. Again, I will say again, uh, the only reason we're live tonight is because she preferred that I continued and went on with the show tonight rather than cancel. She hates when I cancel because of her. So that's why we're here tonight. Um, she's at the hospital right now. Uh, she's been receiving x-rays. According to her last message at... 22 minutes ago, uh, she saw her doctor who, you know, just, just for, you know, the sake of laughing, because you have to laugh at certain things. Uh, Dr. Dick is the name of the doctor, Dr. Dick, everyone. Anyway, um, 22 minutes ago, she said that he's sending her for CT scans on her face to make sure her jaw isn't broken. Um, she said that her face is pretty banged up. And she asked me if I wanted to see a photo, and I said no. Uh, photos always make things look worse. And she kind of warned me that you know it was it was pretty bad. So I have not seen what she looks like. Uh, I I may have to periodically depart just to you know get my shit together here. But uh, regardless of all that stuff, it is. Um, it is Iron Maiden tonight, and uh, a lot of this stuff I have shown off before, but, you know, that was uh, a long time ago on the LeBrain train in some cases, and uh, it's always good to take a look at Iron Maiden again, and look at that $10 price tag. It wasn't that long ago that I bought this. $10. Um, so that's what we're looking at tonight. We've got uh, Mr. Books with us tonight and Harrison Cop, the Mad Metal Man. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Thanks. It's, uh, as Jen said in one of her messages, she said, it's like, we can't seem to catch a break. It's like one thing after another, after another, after another. And uh, it just seems like we've gone from a brutal winter into a shitty summer. Um, just nothing seems to be going our way. Nothing seems to be going according to plan. We've had some great weekends at the cottage, but it seems that those are largely highlights in a sea of crap. Um, She's had a number of, of, of bad seizures this spring, although fortunately not as frequent as we're used to seeing. But um, she did have a number of seizures this spring that were, you know, on the serious side. Um, you know, and I look at the calendar, and today is June the 16th. And um, that means it's been exactly one month since I've spoken to my friend, the California girl, I haven't spoken to her in exactly one month. And that weighs heavy on the mind as well. Cause that's uh, that's a friendship that I value and I don't know. Don't know what to do. So it's been a rough summer so far. It has been a rough summer. Um, anyway, on with the show. 
let's do this. Let's grab a stack of rock. I'm going to go and uh, take care of something. I'll be right back. Grab a stack of rock. metal man evening Lorraine. good evening how are you where's mr books uh that is a good question that is a good question we at the library at the library perhaps we don't know where our special guest mr books is um so what we'll do instead of waiting what we will do is every show we like to start with a little thing called ask harrison and today we're we're running through these very quickly i only have two ask harrison's left <sighs> which one do we do do we do jeff taylor or do we do t-bone we did jeff taylor last week and uh, we haven't seen t-bone in a while uh whichever one i need less prep for because you know i'm underprepared either way uh i'm gonna give you the one that you need more prep for <laughs> so let's do jeff taylor we'll save the best for last which is t-bone we'll do that another time jeff taylor with a question for harrison Whoa, it's Jeff Taylor making his lunch. That's a pretty cool shirt. Do you mind giving us a good look? That's a beauty shirt, man. Hey, Harrison, what's your favorite animal in Australia? Ooh, that's a question I've always wanted to know, too. If I had to pick my favorite animal on your shirt, it's definitely that guy right there. Interesting question. I don't think we get squirrels here in Australia. <laughs> um, Not native, no. Do you mean native animals, or does it? If I've because I've been to the zoo and I've seen some animals there, and they yeah. technically are in Australia. Okay, well that works. Um, Scott Pedal's cheating and he's throwing in an extra ask. Harrison, is there a lag in album releases where you live? Depends. Depends on the record label, I guess. Um, and depends. Uh, yeah, it's odd. Like, there's, there's a bit of a gamble. Do I order it from like the the American overseas Amazon, or you know, do I wait till my local CD store actually gets it in? So it's, they're usually good with releases, but sometimes, um, like the um, a later release, uh, sorry, a, a recent release, they they had took a bit of time to get in. So um, yeah, but no, no, it's not like Toronto in here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a reference, isn't it? Yes. Uh, now, Aaron, so I'm just checking my emails to see if he said at any point that he would be late, but I, I'm not sure. So well, I, you wanted to do an unboxing, I think? Uh, no, but I can answer the question about my favorite animal. Oh, okay. um, my favorite animal in Australia would be my cat. Oh, that's a cute answer. And Ripper the Squirrel, if we were to do a, a fictional <laughs> version. Yes. Well, while we wait for Aaron, I can show a few things off. That I hope he hasn't forgotten us. Last week. Uh, so I think, I think it, not last, I think last time I was on, I showed off parts of the invisible hand that I was working on. Well, some of the more parts that I was waiting for on the mail, in the mail arrived. Mm. So I've got most of it done. The only thing I'm missing, you see those two red parts, they're sand ins for gray parts. Gotcha. But other than that. That's really that nice. Is, yeah. It's a micro scale invisible hand because if I tried to build one at um, Star, the Star Destroyer scale or oh, no, to the scale be... of my Star Destroyer, that would be massive and really yeah. expensive. But yeah, yes. those are the, the emergency booster engines and 
See, those are actually micro scale for a cruiser. It's actually more fun because then you can swoosh mm. and you can still fly half a ship. Yeah, <laughs> not just that. I can um, I can take a picture of it in T-Bone, man, and it doesn't require a whole a whole room of stage just to get it in shot. Now, speaking of T-Bone, man, this mm. man right here in recent weeks has sent me some of his best Lego art that I have seen to date. Oh, you say that every week. I do, but that's because you keep getting better and better and better and better at it. And uh, because Jen and I are now Lego maniacs too, mm -hmm. uh, we may we may actually end up helping you with uh, with some of your photography in the future. I'm looking forward to seeing some other people contribute art just to see the uh, how it differs and stuff like that. But yeah, I also like to think that I get better and better each week. I don't like to think of the possibility of getting worse each week. That well, we will uh, just quickly, we will plug the store address because we have a brand new t-shirt up for sale at tpublic.com and there's Aaron. And uh, we'll just put this up on the screen real quick. That is the address. We have the brand new, sorry folks, we have the brand new T-Bone Man Grab a Stack of Rock uh, sorry, T-Bone Man shirt available in the Grab a Stack of Rock store. And this is the forthcoming cover of T-Bone Man Chapter 17, which is the crossover we've been waiting months to post, T-Bone Man versus Edie Van Helen. And Harrison, is that post going to go up on uh, Wednesday next week? That is the plan. I'm just okay. finishing off the last few bits of artwork today. And then it will be ready to post next week. Well, that is awesome. I am well, really today, excited. Tomorrow is when I truly, it. truly believe it's some of your best artwork to date. And uh, I think, honestly, it's my favorite story that I've written to date, surpassing mm -hmm. T-Bone Man Goes to Camp. Um, and I can't yeah. wait to post it. And I'm going to bring on our buddy, Aaron, who is waiting. So I was just about to quickly say, you are very fond of spoiling some of the artwork for upcoming shows. I love to spoil the artwork, man, because it's so damn good. And there's nothing wrong with posting teasers, man. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with posting teasers, especially that one. Because, you know, a lot of the time in the early days, you might see mm -hmm. the cover for the next issue of the comic book advertised. In yeah, the that was designed to be one of those like spoilery Marvel uh, comic titles that gets you interested by thinking something's going to oh, happen. It's so good. It's so good. So go to that T Public address that I just showed. Check that out. Check out the brand new T-Bone Man t-shirt. Uh, it's incredible. And thank you, Mike, for, for watching. We're going to get on to the vinyl now. Please we're going to bring on know. Aaron, and we're going to get on... With the Iron Maiden. How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you guys? Great. Long time no see. Mm, Long great. time great no to see. see. Very good to see you, Harrison. I've missed you guys. Yeah. Missed you too, man. Now, point of order. I have another light right here. Okay, I see I, it. But when I turn it on, it kind of washes out. Yeah, just leave it off. Yeah, okay. You get so, that glow uh, off my head. So I understand that you don't have like a heck of a lot of Iron Maiden to show off tonight, but you're just happy to hang out. I have my son to thank for a couple of cool things I forgot I had. Okay, cool. And mm -hmm. there was something that I, maybe when someone else is talking, I, there's one more place I can look, but I, I have something else. Maybe if I can find okay. it. But, so you missed, uh, you missed the first five minutes. I did a pre-show thing here. Uh, okay. We have a, a situation tonight. Um, uh, the only reason that I am here tonight is because Jen kind of preferred that I go live rather than not. Uh, she's in the hospital right now. She had a seizure and a bad fall. Uh, they're doing a CT scan on her face right now to make sure her jaw isn't broken. So like I said, the only reason I'm here tonight is because she kind of preferred that I, I, I go live rather than cancel again because she hates when I cancel on her. Oh because my God. Of her. So oh, I may be in and out. Yeah. I may be leaving you with Harrison for a bit here and there. Yeah. But yeah, uh, for now, we? we're we're, we're going to start with Harrison. We're going to do the same thing we normally do. We'll do a round. Yep. We're going to start with Harrison. I think, I don't know if you're going to do an unboxing or if you're going to start with the maiden. Uh, I already unboxed what came in a couple okay. of days ago, but it was maiden. But just very quickly, because it's a, a quite a new release, and I'm just going to quickly show off this. Yes, yes. Hang on a second. Hold on. Hold on. You know, I have so many new albums and stuff that I have not played, <laughs> haven't opened mine yet. I, have I haven't the even opened CD it yet. Blu -ray. What you can see it better on your screen, so can you just keep holding that up, Mike? What sure. I what annoys me here is they do the um, can you just move it down slightly? 
Thank you. They do the deep purple, like Coverdale Lord Pace thing along the top, oh, but they, yeah. they say Alice, Johnny, Joe, Tommy, but none of the people under the names are the people of the name above them. That's like you know every what? movie poster. There's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. I on know Alice is the most, the biggest On name. movie posters, there is a reason for that. It's all got to do with how these actors want to be build, you know? And sometimes they have to compromise and maybe... Like for example, I'll just I'll just throw out two names. Maybe Stallone and Schwarzenegger are on a poster together, and they can't kind of agree who's the star of the movie. So Schwarzenegger will agree that he gets his name first, but that Stallone gets to be the primary person in the photo with Schwarzenegger in the background, and that's how they balance these egos. Mm -hmm. That's how it works in movies sometimes. Is that that's mm -hmm. why the names are not over the people, because mm -hmm. somebody who prefers a top billing, but egos demanded that they're further back in the lineup. You know. That's I might be completely wrong with this, but I think Jack Nicholson wanted top billing for Batman over Keaton. But and that wouldn't surprise me. That and could that just wouldn't be surprise me if somebody said that about Marlon Brando and Superman. But uh, anyway, that's enough of uh, we, yeah, we, we got to talk about the, we got to talk about the tunes. So for round one of three, it's sort of like newer things. So I just recently picked up. Oh this yeah. I love that album so it's a much. Really, really, really good album. My favorite yeah. of the six reunion era Iron Maiden albums, right there. My favorite. Oh yeah, six. Uh, brave. Yeah, yeah there's six now. Uh, my favorite's Book of Souls, but this comes in second place. Yeah, this one. Yeah, really, really good. If Don't make me ever... rank them. <laughs> I I can't rank Maiden albums. I have to give put them in tiers because you know you rank them and then suddenly like the debuts like. Three notches down. You do have to rank it. them in tiers. That's a, you know what? There's a post in this that we can discuss later. Yeah, it's just because they're just so many of them are so good. But yeah, if there was ever an out a reunion album to play entirely live, this was it. Mm -hmm. oh, shame and I got the bootleg from it. Yeah, I'm a, now the only Maiden studio album I'm missing is Dance of Death and Brave New World. Oh, and Final Frontier. No, I have Brave New World. It's Dance of Death and Final Frontier. Interesting. And you know what? I've been listening to Final Frontier a lot lately, and it is, I used to kind of consider it one of the lower rungs, but now it's just, I'm loving it so much more. Mother of Mercy, what a chorus. Um, and Where the Wild Wind Blows. My yeah. God, those are those are two great songs just right there that have been speaking to me lately. Yeah. And that, I, you know, the, sorry. I, I was just going to say, and that, that leaves off Coming Home, which just, oh. Honestly, Final Frontier is really speaking to me these days. Yeah, I remember when I, I first heard it when I was just getting into Maiden, and I remember only liking about half of it and finding the other half boring. But I, I reckon it's about high time for a revisit. Right, exactly. I liked about half of it and found half of it boring. But now I'm just, I don't know. Like Maiden albums are the kind of thing where if you leave them alone for a few years in in, a, in, a, mm. in some cases, and you come back to them. And I've done this with Book of Souls and Senjutsu, and all these albums are speaking to me in different ways than they did originally. And actually, I haven't talked about this yet, and I'm monopolizing my own show, I realize. <laughs> I haven't talked about this yet, but on the weekend, I chose the Book of Souls to drive to the cottage. Nice. And Jen was digging it. Yeah. Okay. And then we got to Empire of the Clouds. Yeah. And we started talking about it. And then I decided after that to put on... Uh, the interview track, um, what, what it's called, Maiden Voyage, I think it's called, from the oh, vinyl, from the EP, the, the single, yes. yeah, I and that's that, that's like that. another whole twenty-two minutes of Bruce and a little bit of Nico talking about the song and how it was composed and the history of the airship, the R one hundred and one, and we're just listening to it mesmerized, and it's like, man, I married an Iron Maiden fan, or at least she married me and became an Iron Maiden fan, <laughs> but I seem to remember also in 2006 was a matter of life and death. Mm. Jen and I were freshly dating. We were in our first year of dating and we'd gone to a party in Brampton. We we're driving back to Kitchener and Jen had had a little bit too much to drink and we're listening to a matter of life and death in the car. And it might've been for all I can remember, the greater good of God, but Jen goes, who are these guys? I said, it's Iron Maiden. And she's like, this is amazing. <laughs> and, you know, it, we got married. <laughs> it was a sign. It was yeah. a sign. Book of Souls is my favorite Maiden album of the lot. 
Final Frontier just has to, it, it has this unique feeling to it. So yeah, I reckon it's time for a revisit. And I found that the Book of Souls live chapter as well felt more cohesive after a few years because the newer songs didn't like stick out. They, it all felt like Maiden songs. I got to say, having seen the Book of Souls in in person, yes. <laughs> yes and to all that. Can confirm. Can confirm. Mm -hmm. All right, so this one isn't new as such, but I didn't have anywhere else to put it. This is my copy of oh, the first wow. 10 years. Nice. Purgatory and Made in Japan. The ironic part here is that it's a Japanese edition, but oh, it doesn't wow. come with yeah. the bonus of Wrathchild. I know the original Japanese edition of Made in Japan didn't come with Wrathchild, but Japanese bonus tracks are a thing. You should have put it on here, Maiden. Yes, yes. Still, I mean, it's a Japanese version, which is always, uh, in my opinion, more desirable than a domestic. Hmm. Oh, uh, and I have the entire first 10 years box set on CD if we want to see that at some point later on in the show, but I don't think we'll need to. I bought that like five years ago or something. It was described by the seller as in good condition on eBay. And, you know, it goes like good, very good, excellent, and, you know, acceptable under that. It was impeccable. It was in like new condition. I couldn't even tell that it was played. It was a really good pick up that one hey jex russell in the house jex this is your first time meeting mr books aaron stewart say hello hi jex mr books is a linchpin of the community he is the lynch he you know what there's a whole story here jex we'll we'll, we'll talk and uh by all means jex if you want to join we are in hallowed company you you feel free if you want to jump on man oh dear that sounds like pressure <laughs> anyway. and for this the very last one for this round these aren't new pickups per se but they do are quite relevant to what maiden are doing at the moment yep yep somewhere back on tour yeah and um what i can say is that it's a testament to the quality of some of the individual songs on sinjutsu that i am as excited to hear days of future past and hell on earth live as i am to hear caught somewhere in time and stranger in a strange land it's amazing there we go there we go Ooh, this is my only uh, Iron Maiden reissue uh, so far. I'd like to buy, I'd like to have a complete album set of all the records Ooh. from uh, the debut to Seventh Son. Uh, whether original or reissue, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter to me, but I think my only original is uh, Peace of Mind and Live After Death. So this is a nice reissue. Ah, I love it. I love this album. This is like my high school Maiden album. It's a really tough choice for me for my favorite Maiden 80s album between the debut of this one and Seven Son. I know that's half of their 80s albums. <laughs> that's how... <laughs> that's they can't, how go, can't go wrong with any of their 80s albums, in my opinion. But for artwork, I mean, I'm a sucker for the cyberpunk thing. I'm a sucker for Blade Runner. Yeah. Uh, I love I, it, too. I, I love... This art, I've loved it since day one when it came out. I kind of, I'm sorry for stealing your turn here. So, oh, no, it's fine. Um, when Better it came out, blah, blah, like, blah, blah, blah. Off to you. Like, for us, in, in our neighborhood, our group of guys, the way that we saw a lot of new stuff was either in magazines on the shelves or on Much Music on the Power Hour. Power Hour. So it was the Wasted Years video that showed us a lot of this, this new artwork. And the fact that they were kind of going sci-fi, Blade Runner-esque, it was like, yes, yes, Maiden are going there. <laughs> and it suited the music. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 we've done our whole Maiden art show. Like, there's so many great albums. But, yeah. Um, I, remem I remember reading that, um, you know, the, 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 uh, basically the band appear on the back and that the band weren't entirely happy with the likeness. But I don't know. If I, if I pick up an album with Iron Maiden on it and I flip it around to see five guys on the back, I'm pretty sure I can tell that's Iron Maiden. I don't think uh, I, I don't bad. think they're great likenesses, my friend. But I mean, I remember we had to guess who was who in the back cover. We weren't sure when we were kids. We could tell who Harris was from the hair, and Bruce was obvious. But then it kind of got dicey around Nico. <laughs> Always gets dicey around him. He's a funny guy, though. Yeah, yeah. I love I listening mean, yeah. to him talk. The listen with Nico's are great on the um on the ten years single stuff. Yeah, they are. 
they're fantastic um i and, um, strangely forgot to rip all of those to my computer so that's an oversight that i must take care <laughs> there, of um there's actually a listen with nico part 11 as well on the um i know u.s edition of no prayer for the dying which is quite rare yeah i don't have that i do not have that neither but that is my first round i cool. will pass it over to aaron now. oh dear so you showed you <laughs> first of all I, I i just want to say how much fun this is we've it's been a long time since it we, has this is it's really, great to have you back yeah yeah i'm honored i'm honored to be here um if anybody wonders why i'm i'm sort of moving around a lot i now have a standing desk and i am rather a kinetic person to begin mm -hmm. with and so that's I cool. I apologize if I'm making anybody seasick, or you know, if 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 the if the if the monkey in the bottom box is 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 doing funny things, I, that's me, and I apologize. That reminds me. Um, I don't know if anyone noticed, but you, I remember you did a post a while back on that standing desk, and you you included a picture, didn't you? Yeah, it's just a it's a Home Depot workbench. Hmm. I used that picture to model the desk that Mr. Books uses in the KMA Eastern offices in the latest episode of T-Bone Man. You can see he's standing at it. It's the same color with the black I legs. Love it. And there's I books love it. Up to detail. What was I saying earlier, Harrison? You're taking your art to a new level. It's amazing. Yeah. And the reason I bought this instead is because I don't know if you guys have ever been in the market for a standing desk. They are super expensive, especially if you want one that's motorized that you can raise up and mm -hmm. down um they can be like a thousand bucks and they all are wobbly and i didn't want to put my computer on a on a thing that wobbled because mm -hmm. i am a rather kinetic person and i'm likely to knock it over so especially this, on a big sale like mac yeah this is yeah so and so this is a hard maple top six feet wide you know so there goes mike <laughs> anyway um well, you get to be me now uh, if you look in the background and i get to be mike now oh cool okay, well, well, you do a better impression there. of him than me um so you showed an album that wasn't made in just as a mm. new release that you picked up yeah yeah now i've got a new one that i just posted about and i don't know i just want to spread the word about this album because i posted about it recently on the kma and any guitar players out there, I'm sure if you're watching YouTube, you know who Tom Bukovac is. Um, he's a Nashville session guy. Uh, he's been on like 500 records. <laughs> he's <laughs> toured with Hart and he's toured with all kinds of people, Tom Petty and all kinds of stuff. Uh, he is a master player and his touch and his feel oh. are amazing. Um, so I just wanted to once again, shout out, uh, Tom Book of Axe, Plexi Soul, which oh, yes. I picked up. Uh, it is amazing. Uh, and the playing is to die for. Anybody who plays guitar, um, I haven't even opened this yet. I have it on mm. the computer. <laughs> uh, but so for the Maiden stuff. I mean, Aaron, uh, feel free. Sorry to interrupt, oh, but feel free to show off any new releases or anything you've oh, got. Well, as well, because actually... the next time you're on, you'll be showing off the next album anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um i'm trying to think if there's any other news oh this one's for this one's for mike this one's for mike where did, oh he's not even here <sighs> you know he had to drop out again yeah that's okay uh um, so, the old lego star wars games drop in drop out so what i will do then is i will just show this for anybody who mm. wanted to see that's a good one um this is my vinyl of the record store day um Empire of the Clouds. Boy, I was blank. I blanked on the name. I can okay. still hear you guys when I'm dropped out, by the oh, way. Oh, okay. This is my vinyl of that. Yes, that's the one I was talking about that we played on the, yeah. in the car, Maiden Voyage. There's that's Maiden it. Voyage, the story behind Empire of the Clouds. That's the one. That's yeah. the one. So this is sort of a this this I I, I try not to breathe on this too much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's in a plastic baggie and everything. But this one I wanted to show Mike. He has seen a picture of it, but not. Oh, I I presume he's never heard the demo of it, even though he's seen the picture. Yeah. Oh, yes. I wanted, uh, I was curious about that. Yes. yes. So Sloan had an album, and I think it was like 2006, and it was called Never, never Hear, hear, the, never hear the End of It. And this is a 2023 release. They, they re released the album and then on vinyl, and then they put this out, which is a double seven inch 
So it has uh, demos. Nice. Uh, four songs. There's three. There's four sides. So there. It's uh, for the end of the race. It's not the end of the world. The best part of your life in four seasons. Uh, demos and 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 that kind of thing. So you know, I collect all the Sloan. Because yeah. Sloan makes Aaron happy. And, that's not uh, an easy collection to, to, to really, I mean, they've got a lot of stuff that's hard to find from the early years. I have it all right here. Um, except for like the early seven inches. Like I don't have. Yeah. I'm talking about Rhodes Jam. Oh, yeah. I don't have that. That's like a hundred bucks or at least it used to be. <laughs> hey, Aaron. Yeah, I would pay that. Aaron. Yes. You like, you like people. Oh, I'm not a misanthrope at all. Why? What do no. you got? Uh, I would like to introduce you to uh, Jax Russell from Jax hey. Russell's Vinyl World. Hello. Who decided Hello. to stop by. Nice. Gentlemen. Sweet couch, Real quick. man. <laughs> <laughs> you like it? Yeah, I think we had that one in the 70s. <laughs> now, now you, are, you are new to me. It's been so long since I've been on here. Do yes. Well, I've had an origin story. <laughs> Uh, well, you'll be reading his origin story in T-Bone Man very soon, but, mm. uh, I don't know. When did we first get in touch? It was through Deke. It was through Deke yeah. and Tim, really, wow. through Deke and Tim. Yeah, earlier this year, uh, Mike and I got in touch, and the rest is history. So, I've seen the old show. So, I, I've seen you before, Aaron. But, yeah, oh, this okay. is our first time meeting. Oh, sorry for your luck. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to say hi. I don't want to crash the party. Hey. I just, uh, oh, not at all. Just it's good to meet in you. And, uh, I, I've, seen, I've seen some cool maiden stuff. Mm. enjoying harrison yeah. mm -hmm. uh, he shaved eh yes <laughs> I'm, I'm bringing back the beard uh you know clean canvas to bring back the beard the nice oh. thing is that no matter what lego pieces harrison has available chances are he can mix and match and make some kind of version of you that we have seen on the show yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i uh i think i got somewhere between 300 and 400 minifigures built and just lots more parts. I, it's 20 years worth of Lego. Jeez. That's that's seriously yeah. well that explains you know, like, why. Yeah. Yeah. You know these like uh large gray base plates, they're like 48 by 48 studs. Yep. I like line up minifigures on them. You can get like 12 across, and I'm I think you can get like 14 down or something. I've got two of them completely filled. My son is coming over to play. <laughs> <laughs> like, Lego yeah. is his favorite. I don't thing know if you can see, but I have a bit of a storage problem at the moment because oh. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm working oh. on a couple builds. That's why that's just covered in it in Lego as well. Like the mm -hmm. I was working on the Invisible Hand and a few other things, and then you know I've got like some Lord of the Rings up there. I've got an angry octopus back there on Akator, which isn't Lego, <laughs> but it's funny. Anyway, uh, I'll stop. That's cool. No, I don't know. Lego what? is. I hear about it all the time in this house. Oh, you're going to be hearing about it a lot more from this house mm. because uh, if you've been keeping up with recent events, Aaron, my wife has become a Lego maniac, and uh, oh. We're having a great, a great old time. Oh, cool. Yeah, my son has stated, he's 14, and he stated more than once that it's one of his goals, I guess. If you ask him what he wants to be, he wants to go be a designer for Lego. Can't blame him. Can't he wants blame to go, him. like, live in Denmark or wherever they are and go do that. So I said, hey. It's a good goal. That's a good goal. Mm. All of your dreams, man. I'll, I'll go visit that you. that at all. <laughs> We'll see. Either that or he'll be the starting keeper for uh, Real Madrid. I don't know. One or the other. <laughs> so close. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Those are his... There's no reason he can't do both. Yeah. I don't want to slow uh, I don't want to slow down your show, guys. Uh, I'm going to be brief, but uh, I brought a little show and tell real quick, you know, keeping up with the theme. Yeah. Uh, I don't have much rare Maiden, but uh, I thought I do have the Maiden England 88, the original VHS. Oh, I so, had that. Did on you? PAL, on PAL. Oh no, no, mine's NTSC. I had uh, to pay but... to get mine converted. <laughs> no, uh, but it's it's in storage, so I'm like, I can't show that. But uh, the only other concert I have is oh, that's oh, rare Death on the days. Road. Nice. I've never yeah. seen that. That it's, is uh, that is proper rare. That is rare. Is it? I didn't know. Yeah, how yeah, it's know out of print. Uh, for some reason, they and it let... was never never printed in large yeah. numbers in the first place. Yeah, for some reason, wow. Death on the Road and Rock in Rio were just let they just let it go out of print, and even stuff like Flight Six 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 and um, the early days, Visions of the Beast, they're starting to get you know you don't find them everywhere. Got Visions, but, of the Beast. but that one had a much more limited release. Oh yeah, I think it's course. three discs. So uh, mm. Rex, uh, Jax, where do you live and where do you keep your keys? 
<laughs> oh, I'm on the I'm on the East Coast of Canada. That's, that's oh, all. I'm right on by. I'm gonna show you. <laughs> here, let's see. Uh, I'll show you the disc. Yeah, it is a three disker. Yeah. Oh wow. Now, if you got the first edition of that, I think they mislabeled the stereo and the 5.1. Correct. Oh. How do you but but that? like, who cares if there's a misprint? As I'm... long as you got the music, right? That yeah, yeah, yeah. doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of things about a lot of Maiden things because that's a story. It's, it's a long story. I don't want to derail things, so I'll okay. save it for another time. <laughs> that's wicked, Jax. That's something that oh. none of us have. Yeah. Really? I didn't, yeah. I didn't realize it was so rare. I found this at a video store that was getting rid of it um, a few years back, maybe like five, six years ago. And I thought, yeah, sure, oh. Maiden, Maiden Gods are why not? But now, now you guys are making me really happy knowing it's uh, how rare it is. I had no idea. One of my coworkers did loan me the discs to to watch because he had it so i technically look at that borrowing. oh that's an alice cooper book like he also loaned me oh cool i was gonna say that looks nothing like mine <laughs> i was gonna say that's not iron maiden that says it's now that's, no, no, that's uh, the eyes of alice cooper massey hall toronto 10 30th Ooh. of the 10th 03. Ooh. local massey, show massey hall would be a good place to see him yeah, yeah. yeah. i've seen him twice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah well Oh well, done. I'll leave you too, guys. I just wanted you to take stop care. By Thanks for hello. stopping by with very your nice stack of maidens. Here, very nice to meet yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> you, man. Nice to meet you, Aaron. Good to see you again, Harrison. Yep. Take care, Mike. Ciao. Have a good one, buddy. That's cool. Ah, there you. you go. We make new friends. We make yeah. new friends. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, Jax, like Jax is an amazing guy. I, yeah. I dare say he's a better co-host than me. But... He's been on like almost every show since like April. <laughs> any show he can get on he gets on oh, yeah and, and he he's been to. doing and he's got a new one with deke tomorrow on um, the distortion den even if he they're has doing, to kick the door down like rambo they're doing pearl jam 10 Ooh. versus stone temple pilots core oh that's not even a thing well i am sure they will make it a thing okay i, I gotta go i gotta text <laughs> i mean i uh, like them both but i know what i would pick carry so on how many, gotta... how many rounds are we doing here uh, i have three but um okay that's cool because yeah. i've got more so um, Three is generally the standard. Oh, you know, sure. Opinion. Well, then I can break it up. I can break it up. Uh, I tried to come up with some some fun, cool things, but mostly I've just got the bog standard albums. So here's a question for you. Those. Here's a question for you. You you said, uh, was it Dance of Death you don't have? Yeah, and okay. uh, Final Frontier. Okay, so now it's just you don't have the album at all, or are there special editions you're looking for? No, I just don't have Dance of Death, and I don't have Final Frontier. It would be cool to get the Mission edition of Final Frontier or whatever that was, but I'm not particularly fussed which edition of Dance of Death or Final Frontier. Partly because Maiden don't really do special editions of their albums with no. exclusive music. Um, like with Senjutsu and with the last live album, they did their deluxe edition, but it's just a book with extra pictures, which, I mean, yeah. it's cool, but I'm not paying, like, the extra for nothing extra. Plus, then I can't fit the damn book with the rest of my CDs. Yeah, no. The reason I ask is because uh, I'm also now curious: are they are they hard to come by in your neck of the woods? Not really. They every maiden album is in print and available. Yeah. They they recently remastered them, but um, yeah, I just um, it's not, they're just not albums that I've been you know possessed with the urge to like seek out. You know, I sort of just I'll grab them when I see them. Oh sure, yeah, in, in your travels and stuff. Mm. I was going to say, because if you're having a hard time, no. I'm going to Toronto shortly. <laughs> and part of my mission, this is just a day to go down and do what I want to do. So you know what that is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go check out some record shops. I'm going to have and to update the Grail list, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, actually, I'm going to put up a post about that. Because um, if I'm going to Toronto, potentially meeting up with James from the KMA Western offices as well. He's He may be coming in from Regina for that week and he may be there when we're there so if that's the case i'm gonna to try to meet up with him for lunch or something but um he uh, anyway yeah i'm going down to the record shops so i do thank you for the reminder i do need to put up a grail list update reminder because i am going and i can look when i'm there so i'm gonna hit up sonic boom and bmv and you know all the all the usual spots go down with my dad for the day it'll be nice so but we couldn't do it this weekend because it's father's day so oh yeah 
preemptorily happy Father's Day to everyone. I saw a t-shirt that said my, my favorite people call me dad, but it didn't fit. So I couldn't get it. (laughs) It was like a medium or something. I'm like, oh, that's not happening. (laughs) Are there any dads that fit in medium sized t-shirts? Oh, probably. Sure. If I was a dad, I'd, I could fit a medium now. I'm, I've slimmed. I've slimmed a lot. Ooh, how'd you do it? Because I've been working my ass off. Don't, uh, stress. I'm, I'm going to answer that by Ooh. saying stress. Oh, I don't need that though. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't. You, don't. you, you miss, see, you missed the whole five minute opening. Yes, yes. Oh anyway, man, I just I'm, I'm impressed you're even here. She's uh, she's going for a CT scan now. Oh. Um, I, oh God, I just it sounds like her jaw might be broken, but oh my God. Anyway. Um, should I go? Should I do my my stack? Yeah, yeah. Go All ahead. Right. We were just talking about how many rounds there might be because I've got a few things here. Okay. I don't uh, know. I don't know. I'm going to keep going as long as I can handle it. Okay. Yeah. 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 All uh, right. I figured I'd start with uh, smaller things rather than 12 inch vinyl. So you've already seen the clairvoyant single, which I incidentally also have on 12 inch vinyl. Do you want Harrison? Do you want to do the close ups? Yes. Ooh, oh, great. Power. I, can't act, I can't actually get to you. Oh, there we are. Sorry. Uh, straight, the UI was fighting me. Now you can uh, see here there's only one B-side. What a Whereas, s- shape. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I was not like I, I, I was not a serious fan of the whole disembodied head Eddie aesthetic that they were going for mm-hmm. on the Seventh Son era. But it I'm pretty made sure that was a pretty Derek trippy choice. artwork. I'm pretty sure that was a Derek choice, so he well, wouldn't have to draw as much. Um, he specifically said yeah. that he was getting really About sick and tired seven, of yeah. drawing Eddies that were constantly like killing people and you know axes through heads. He wanted to do something more symbolic, you know. And this is all. I don't know what these things are symbolizing, but there's Eddie with. I think eyeballs. it might be symbolizing speak evil, see evil, hear evil. Well, that's a very good. I jest. Uh, I jest. That's that that works, man. That works. Anyway, there's the clairvoyant for you, and that's these are really in no cool. particular order. Um, this next one is red colored vinyl, number of the beast, reissue single. Ooh, so nice. Ooh, yeah, it's got an inner. Oh, nice. Inner sleet inner poster. Um, anyway, this the, has uh, two tracks: number of the beast original and number of the beast live at Brixton O2. Nice little Eddie there. Got tour dates on the back and like i said there's a poster thingy in here let's uh see i don't usually unfold these things but we'll do this for grab a stack of rock and why oh wow it's a calendar it's a 2005 calendar <laughs> I oh, have so i but i am listening this may I'm never sure. have been opened before for all i know this may this may be the first time it's ever been opened i'm sure someone somewhere is going to pay a lot of money for that <laughs> Yeah, well, it's not for sale, as I'm proud just, to uh, just, proclaim yeah. on all my all my stuff on my site. None of it's for sale. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, this, of course, has the exclusive track, The Number of the Beast, live, Brixton 02. And why not? Dare I say, why not? Now, here's another reissue single. And when I say reissue single, they're really not, because they had new live material on them. And this is the highly sought after The Ooh. Trooper. Nice. Mm. This one has another life live in 2005, which uh, Harrison, you would know all the details on that, mm. how rarely that was played with Bruce. Yeah. No, uh, Beast Over Hammersmith and the early days tour, I think, is the only times Bruce ever did that one live. Right. Yeah. Oh, Although it's Grant a... Arthur in the house. Hello, Grant. How are you yeah. tonight, it's, sir? It's a bit odd with these, um, with like this early 2000s and with their retrospective tours, because I think they did a retrospective tour in like the early 2000s around Dance of Death, like right before Dance of Death. And then I think they did another one when the early days came out. And you can even on... consider uh, Ed Hunter to be a... Uh, oh, yeah, that too. Yeah. Like really, uh, Ed Hunter is really the first one. Speaking of Ed Hunter, that was the last time we heard Stranger in a Strange Land live. Until now. Yeah. And it's always fun to hear that one live because Stranger in a Strange Land is one of the five, only five Iron Maiden songs that fades out. So they have to find a different way to end yes, it. Yes, you're right there. Yes. That always struck me as unusual that it faded out. Out of the Silent Planet, seven inch single. Uh, the B side on this one is Aces. 
high. But uh, I of, believe that's also on the 12 inch. Speaking of Out of the Silent Planet, coincidentally, is that another one of the ones that fades out, or am I just misremembering? Mm, no, Out of the uh, Silent Planet, we are. It's not yeah. really a fade out. No. Yeah. No, yeah. Oh, this next one's kind of a cheat. It's not a it's not vinyl, but it's packaged like vinyl. This is a real mm. treasure. I bet not many people know it exists. From the uh aforementioned Final Frontier album. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I love that artwork. Love That's amazing. It. And inside is actually the promo CD single. Oh. And um a little sort of fact sheet, I think, for the radio to play and read your typical information. Release date, Iron Maiden, Spinal Frontier, Monday, 16th August, 17th August in the USA. Mm -hmm. New album artwork has just been unveiled to their website, ironmaiden.com. It was illustrated by Melvin Grant. Blah, 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 blah. Ironmaiden.com, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, there's tons of stuff there to read. I'm not going to read it. You can... Uh, Acquire your own copy if you if you like on the Discogs, perhaps. But um, Iron Maiden, El Dorado from the Final Frontier album, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, that's brilliant. Oh yeah. Oh. Just if I may sit on Final Frontier a little bit, what are your thoughts on the Eddie on the artwork? Because I know it was very mm. uh, controversial. Not a fan personally, but you know, it's it's an alien aesthetic. You know, yeah. like that kind of thing in yeah. general. I think it made for one of the best on stage backs at Eddie's because um, it wasn't just the head that came up. You also got the hands as well, so it looked more complete. Yes, that's a cool one. That is. Ten bucks. Ten I'm bucks. Sure. B side on this single. one is I'm a mover. Mm. The other single artwork is better, but that one's really cool still because of that. And you can tell this is their Christmas single <laughs> because Happy New Beer. Um, actually, I can read it better this way. Mm -hmm. um, have a kin great one. Happy New What's It from Nico. That's Nick. Cole. Merry right. Christmas and Happy New Year from Steve Harris. So, you know, you can see in the UK, Christmas singles are a big deal. Um, but that would be what this was. Bring your daughter to the slaughter from the No Prayer for the Dying album. And Previously I have another vintage single so next. Agree. Now, here's a weird, weird story here is that this single originally wasn't mine. My sister bought this. I don't know why. But she, you know, she had great taste in music at one point. And she bought Run to the Hills by Iron Maiden, featuring Total Eclipse on the B-side, which Steve Harris now has resurrected to the album proper, where he <sighs> regretted and always wished he had. I just hate the fact that he dropped Gangland for it instead of Invaders. You don't drop a song. If anything, you stick it on there. Oh, hey, Grant. Yeah. Grant's been leaving comments. Yeah, like Iron Maiden have to be the only artist that I know of that reissue their albums with less songs instead of bonus tracks, and it drives me up the wall. Right, you could have just put it on there as an additional track, yeah. maybe after a pause at the end of the album or what have you. And finally, it's a 10-inch vinyl here. Oh, that's a great song. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love that album. The Reincarnation of Benjamin Brieg. Which is so good. Mm. It's so good. Featuring previous unreleased B-sides and crossed guns sticker, which has never been stuck. The B-sides are the Trooper, Radio One Legends Session, and Run to the Hills, Radio One Legend. I, I know we, we just don't have enough versions of those songs. Mm -hmm. We just don't. Um, one of those um one of those B sides I think on one of these um A Matter of Life and Death albums has a, I think it's brighter than a thousand suns uh, live at Abbey Road. On what? Um yeah, there's this um version of Brighter Than a Thousand Suns they did live in this like I think Abbey Road studio. It's quite rare. I don't know if it's on a B side or if it's just a, a video, but I've definitely seen footage of it. I would say that would have to be just a video because I would hope that one of the two of us would have heard about a physical copy of that by now. Hmm. I'll have to look into that and report back because it's been a while since I actually watched it. It wasn't even on YouTube. I had to go to Daily Motion. Pay attention. Well, you know what, Grant? 
I agree. I am not paying attention, but I also have a co-host that is not paying attention. So really, I I'm prefer to settle attention much. myself. And but I've oh. had a pretty, I've had a pretty freaking rough night. So. Hey, was I supposed to be paying attention? No, you can't control oh. the comments. <laughs> what are we talking <laughs> about? <laughs> I've got it in full screen. I, 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 I wasn't can't see putting, any comments. I wasn't putting Grant's comments on the screen, and Harrison's negligent in his screen. I'm in full screen. Yeah, it means it means you're being negligent in your duties, in my opinion. But that's okay. I'm not. I need be, a pay rise. I'm not going to be too <laughs> be too hard on you tonight. That wasn't in the job description. I feel like I, I feel like I want to show off a few more, but um, okay. You know what? Story. You'll time. have a couple more rounds. Story time. Story time. So. I got this. Mm. Would have been summer of '85, and I got it at the record store in Kincardine, Ontario, as a birthday gift for my best friend Bob. Turned out Bob already had it, so oh well, I get to keep hmm. peace of mind. <laughs> and um, I you remember this album. Be- Sorry, you did that on purpose, I'm sure. Is that what, what well, album no, I'm joking. I no, I, I I thought that he needed peace of mind, but uh, with a lot of stuff with gifts with friends, I had backup plans. Like if he has it, I'm keeping it. You know, <laughs> um, I wasn't really collecting vinyl back then. I was more cassette, but you know, it was it, it wasn't a big deal to have it on vinyl versus cassette, especially when it's Iron Maiden, because you know. <laughs> I love the disembodied hand holding the Derek Riggs logo. And um, I love that all these Iron Maiden albums had like biblical quotes on them back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, love that stuff. Uh, I loved it. Still, we refer to Martin Birch as Black Knight Birch, you know, because of this album, of all the albums that he had with all the nicknames that he's had on all these Iron Maiden. And I think even Deep Purple albums, he had nicknames. On all of them, the night the name that stuck the most is Black Knight Birch. My buddy Bob and I still call him Black Knight Birch because of this album. There you go. And then you open it up. <laughs> and I mean, we stared at you can see, you can see how well loved this this is. You know, this hmm. these lyrics have been read and read and reread and reread, and the pictures have been gazed upon, but we loved here is you actually get a picture and I wish it would focus properly, but there's Martin black Knight Birch and the very seldomly photographed Derek Riggs, Dr. Death, Derek Riggs, hmm. Martin Popoff just uh, posted a picture of him with Derek Riggs recent. Uh, well, it wasn't a recent picture, but he just posted the picture. It was pretty cool. Anyway, it was cool to me. It's like, there's black Knight Birch. He's right there. He's a person, you know? I, don't, I didn't know what a record producer was back then. I knew what Derek Riggs did. I didn't know what Black Knight Birch did. I knew that he was kind of in charge of things. Didn't know what record producers did back then, though. And on the other side, I love this picture. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're literally sitting down to eat a piece of mind. We're going <laughs> to see that picture again. And what I love most about this picture is Adrian Smith. He looks like he's going to be sick. Mm-hmm. He literally looks like he's going to be sick. Look at Steve looking at it. He doesn't Steve, look Steve doesn't look hungry. <laughs> Dave kind of like looks more curious than anything else. Nick goes like, yeah, I'll have a go at that. Sure, why not? Mm-hmm. And Bruce is just like, don't fuck with me. I've got a knife with an apple stuck to the tip of it. <laughs> with a bite taken out of it. You know? I'm a badass. <sighs> you know, the guy's like five foot tall, but doesn't he look like a badass? <laughs> Man, oh, so can many you just put that up again? Um, I think looking at Steve Arms, that's before he got tattoos on him. Yes, 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 it is. Look, and same with uh, the other guys too, Nico. Yeah, well, you can't see, but back then they didn't have that. If you look at yeah, pictures neither, of them, yeah, Dave didn't either. It, I find slave. it uh, interesting that Dave has tattoos because he's one of the, the quieter ones in the band. I find it interesting that Steve Harris is best friends with Andy Curran, who sang No Tattoos, Gotta Stay Cool. My <laughs> mama never raised no fool. Took one look at the skin on my back. I nearly gave her a heart attack. <laughs> anyway, I think that's it for my turn. I'm going to take a break because Jen has just te- texted me again. So, Harrison, you go ahead. All right. We're about to lose all the viewers now because I'm going to the Blaze Bailey era and I'm not sparing any out. Hey, okay, bye. 
No. <laughs> Thank you. I can I can actually remove you if you like. No, no, it's fine. I'm <laughs> kidding. I, I just well. go ahead. No, please go. So this first one was shown off not too long ago, but I like it. This is the Japanese version of the X Factor. You can't tell it's the Japanese by looking at this front, but if you look at the side, yep. you can see there's the um, Japanese writing. And then on the, the back is the same angle. But um, So this is in one of those fat CD cases. I love these fat CD cases. Yes. And um, you've got the main album, obviously, and then you've got a bonus disc with three songs that were basically off cuts from oh, oh you can see you can see Unicron in the reflection of the disc. <laughs> nice. Anyway, these three songs are were basically off cuts from the X Factor. They're a lot they're quite lively and rocking compared to the rest of the songs on there. And they were previously available on a selection of B sides, but this is the only place that you can get it's upside down. So let me just This is the only place that you can get I Live My Way on C D. Okay, well done. Yeah. And I like these songs very much, so that's why I bought this. Well, yeah. Now, from the X Factor, this is a bootleg. Around about, when, around about 2020, there was this very odd shift in bootlegs because suddenly all these radio broadcast bootlegs just started getting uploaded to the topic channels of artists on YouTube. And then Amazon just started... just. Amazon themselves just sold this bootleg from the X Factor. It's from look Israel nineteen ninety. Pardon? I gotta look that up. Yeah, <laughs> it's from it's from Israel nineteen ninety five. It doesn't have the full show, but it's got great versions of Man on the Edge. It's got the best version I've ever heard Blaze do of Wrathchild. At the very end, he lets out this ungodly scream that makes me think, well, why couldn't you do that more often? It's got, you know, Heaven Can Wait, Lord of the Flies, Fortunes of War. It's got Number of the Beast and Hallowed, which, you know, they are. it is what it is. Um, but it's got this version of the Trooper. Now, Blaze obviously didn't do the Trooper very well, but every other member of this band is, like, firing on, like, 11 out of 10 cylinders. It's such, so, such an energetic, such a really good rendition. I listened to this version just to hear the rest of the band, the instrumentship. The whole, the whole version just sounds so alive and energetic. And at the very end of it, Blaze thanks the crowd for a great night. And if that version of the troop was anything to go by, they had a really good night. And then you have two interviews, part one, part two, from 1995. They're from this time period, um, I think just before the first album was released or either just after it was released and just before they went on tour. And it's this really unique time period because there's this optimism that they never really had again in after that. It's, it's a sad and nostalgic look back at this time period of, that was, yeah, optimistic, basically, which sadly was not. Now I have another bootleg. You've seen this one before. This is incredibly rare. It's a soundboard recording of the main set from their Brazil 1996. And this is my favorite show from the X Factor. Um, ironically, you've got, they mistitle some of the names here. You've got Man on the Edge is Falling Down. Um, <laughs> Blood on the World's Hands is Out of Control. Um, Sign of the Cross is called The Name of the Rose. But yeah, I'm really happy to get that. Out of Control. So they instead of taking one line of the song, which is Blood on the World's Hand, they yeah. just randomly chose another line of the song, which actually goes, he's out of control. Mm. Or it's out of control. One of the two. It, it might change. <laughs> All right. Now, this one I teased a little while back. But I have finally acquired the Grail item that is. Mm. Yay! 3D, I got that. I got that. The 3D cover of. Funny, I call these things Grail items, but it turns out when you have a job and a Discogs account, uh, the definition of Grail item changes a lot. <sighs> yes. But um, yeah, this is my, one of my favorite pieces of maiden artwork, and I'm a huge sucker for the lenticular. Oh, yes. design of things i lenticular is like if you want to get me to buy something put a lenticular cover on it and I'll, it'll be hard to resist but um yeah so i'm really glad to have this that's awesome and, and I, lastly, I remember i remember the message that said please uh, happily remove that from the yes list. yes <laughs> yes it turns out that most of my trips to the grail list these days are to tell you to remove things from it which is nice but that's i might have awesome. to update it for your upcoming trip. And now this isn't the blaze area, but I didn't know where else to put it. It's immediately after it's a CD single of out of the silent planet. 
Oh, nice. Which I bought for the B-sides of the two live tracks from the Ed Hunter Tour, because the Ed Hunter Tour is one of my favorite Iron Maiden set lists, and we need a full live album ASAP from it. Yeah. Hey, are you listening, Maiden? <laughs> they never listen, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, now I'm here. They should be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, we is should get Andy is, Curran to just whisper in Steve's ear. Is that the same two live tracks that I have? Uh, yeah, it'll be the same as on your CD single. One of them is on Best of the B-Sides. Oh, but, um, boys. The updates I'm getting aren't good. Yeah, that's oh, my oh. round two. You need to go, Mike? I don't know. Um, I mean, there's nothing I can do. Just Right. Apparently, I need to be prepared for the worst when she gets home as to the look of the facial injuries. Wow. Just remember that any any wound to the head looks worse because the there's very little padding. Yeah, um, it's more the face. Yeah, um, and uh, oh boy. Okay, well we're just waiting for results from the CT scan. So okay, so I guess uh, I'll hang in till then at least. So since I missed it, did she just did she hit? When she I fell? assume so. I don't have all the details okay. yet myself. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I just wondered, but it sounds that way. Sounds oh, like yeah. it was a. It sounds like it was a face plant, oh. and, and the the the. <laughs> she was trying to explain it to me on the phone, but her mouth is so messed up she couldn't really say face plant. And I was like, "What are you saying? Like, I don't understand the, your." And then I realized, "Oh shit, she." Oh. Oh. <sighs> yeah. All right. Well, you got to go. Go. <laughs> well, no, let's, let's 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 keep going until we get the the CT scan results back. I'll feel better if we know it's not a broken jaw. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I'll if if you're done, Harrison. Yes. Yes. Okay. I have my son to thank for this round because he reminded me I even have these. Back, I haven't had a drink since 2015, but I collected nah. the maiden beers just for the bottles. There's nothing mm-hmm. in here. Mm-hmm. Um. So that's the trooper beer. The Those are beautiful. Beer. They're so they're so nice. And I've got one of those. Just, just their cap. Anyway, and then this one is the oh the red and the black. It's a porter, mm-hmm. uh, and it just had a black top. And then the last one is the six six six. Ah. Uh, and it's a limited edition. I don't know what that means, but it also had a trooper cap. Now, if you keep me on big, oh, some of them, and I don't remember which, and I don't know, I have six of them here. I don't know if that's all of them. I remember trying to collect as many as I could. I'll hold them up two at a time. I collected the other caps. Oh, okay. Let's see them then. Oh, yeah. So first of all, they are kept in this wonderful mug that is the second breakfast club <laughs> the hobbits, <They're> hobbits. <laughs> that's great that's great this, this was a gift from my lovely wife so i thank her for that love it uh, yeah they're the second breakfast club now um so these are other caps that came with the maiden beers i don't know if you can see these yep I can Somewhere see them. in time and killers by the look of it. Yep. So there's those two. Sorry for my hands. No, it's all good. That would and actually then, make a good thumbnail for the uh, for the YouTube. Uh, if then, you put them over your eyes. Like yeah. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. No one's gonna <laughs> click that. No one's gonna click that. Okay. So these are the Add next- a lens flare to his forehead. <laughs> no. How do I? Um, yeah, that looks okay. So there's uh, somewhere in time, Eddie, and uh, um, looks like uh, Ace is high, Eddie. With the that's Power Slave. We had somewhere in time last time. Oh, sorry. Yes, you're right. Yes, Ace is high. I think I can even see the bullet holes. Yeah, you can see the bullet holes in the goggles. Yeah. yeah. So those are those are different ones. And then the last two that I have uh, th- for that uh, are these two. Oh wow! Book Souls, one for mm. each disc. Harrison, could that not have been live after death, Eddie? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Power Slave. I've seen like an artwork of um, of like an expanded version of that where it's um, Eddie and he's got his like hands up and the, there's like the chain between them and he's getting struck by lightning. Sorry, I threw oh, the he's got the chain the in his mouth. Which one he's was like, it you were interested in? This one? 
No, that's, that's eight as high. The other oh, one. That's okay, Aaron. That one. Okay, here I'm throwing them around now. Oh, my neck um, is killing me too. Everything's freaking killing me. So my, I got a headache one? the size of the Titanic. Yeah, that's the one. And yeah, I think you can see chains in his mouth. Yeah, and and the bandages on his fat head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, I I bought enough beers to get all the different caps. And I very, very carefully opened them so they didn't bend. Yes, yes, I've noticed that they're all immaculate. Yeah, and uh, so that was that was a project that took a while because I didn't drink it very much even when I did uh, have a ha, imbibe. Now, the other thing that I have, and I don't have the first one. I don't have the first one of this. And it is called Lord Iffy Boat Race. <gasps> but I have... The oh! Uh, which I found in, oh, she said boom on college street in Toronto. I think we've been there together once. Yes, we have. And I paid. That looks like it's in good condition. Yeah. I paid 10 bucks for it. Oh, that's a steal. Yeah. So it's, you know, I'm just curious, Aaron, is there an artwork credit? I'm curious who did his artwork for this book. It doesn't um, look like anybody he's ever used anywhere else. Uh, I'll have to look inside. Do you yeah, have? Yeah, it? yeah. Report back at some future time. Do you mm -hmm. have this book? No. Oh, they're, they're proper rare now. Yeah. Photo set by Parker Typesetting Service, Lester, printed in Great Britain, McKay's of Sedgwick, London. No, uh, doesn't say anything about the artwork. I'll have to look it up. Speaking yeah. of rare That's... books, just quickly, if you all guys see the novelizations of Mad Max 1, 2, or 3, can I add those to the Grail list, please? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that yeah. was like the kind of thing I would have seen frequently when I was a youngster going oh, yeah. into the whatever, the, whatever the bookstore at Stanley Park Mall was. W.H. Smith, probably. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking for Lord Iffy Boat Race. I don't know. Yeah, well. If that's a used copy. It's not in the best shape. There's some uh, pages that looks like somebody was eating when they were reading it. There's yeah, some plus yeah. mudgy on the pages, but. I thought you were um, about to say somebody looked like somebody was eating them. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No. Uh, yeah. but, uh, that makes sense now. Yeah, so I've got enough for one more, so you may as well okay. go. I'm going to go ahead. Yeah. We'll see how far we get. Yeah. Um, I got one more in there. Do you want to do my close up, uh, Harrison, please? My beauty shot? Um, uh, I don't know. Um, has the director allowed you to have a close up? You know what? I'm going to do it myself. Okay, there we go. Make sure you get his best side. Um, most of my maiden vinyl, my Ooh. vintage maiden vinyl, came from my buddy Bob. So, Peace of Mind was the first one. You know, it was kind of bought for him, but then I kept it. Then this one was from his personal collection, The Evil That Men Do. We love the artwork on this one. That's wicked. Um, love the back cover with Bruce with that sword. Mm -hmm. Dave with the guitar. Dave with the guitar. Adrian looked really cool. Um, and this thing folded out into a poster, which we just like, it was like, <gasps> when we saw this poster. Because, wait until you see what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. And you might say, oh yeah, it's no big deal. But hey, Bob and I used to sit there and fantasize about seeing this very oh. show right here. Oh my goodness. Like, like we're like, look at that. <laughs> Iron Maiden Kiss. And David Lee Roth and Megadeth. Look at these Guns N' Roses guys. It just Guns keeps going. We're a new band. <laughs> Halloween. Just barely wow. above Halloween. Okay, who's Neil K? I have no idea. He's a DJ, I believe. Isn't yeah, he. I think he's the DJ from the Sound House. So he was the one that the Sound House tapes got played at. I forgot okay. what the name of the place was. Yeah, there's some pictures in concert pictures. Some more in concert pictures. Lots of in concert pictures. I'm doing a terrible accent. I need to stop. Um, so yeah, when Bob kind of got out of rock music, he gave me. Well, didn't give me. He sold me. Gave me first dibs. Mm -hmm. On most of his collection, there was only one record that I failed to acquire from him. And uh, where did I put the plastic sleeve? There it is. Uh, it was, I, I don't know if it was a bootleg or if it was a radio promo, but I suspect it was a bootleg. And uh, it was a live EP, I believe, like a live single. 
And all I know, is, I can't remember any of the tracks, but all I know is that it had like kind of like a tie dyed look to it. It was like a tie dyed picture disc. Hmm. And hmm. Uh, couldn't tell you anything else about it. But he sold that to somebody who was willing to pay a lot of money, a lot of money. <laughs> Much more than I had in my bank account, I think, at that time. But uh, Chris Sarr thinks that's a cool poster. Thank you, Chris Sarr. And then we have oh you had to have you have to have this on vinyl because it's got contains five selections. I've got it on vinyl too. <laughs> it's up on my this wall. is sort of like one of those musts for vinyl because, like Harrison said, it's hard to get Wrathchild on CD. Mm. Look at that! This record is dedicated to all the headbangers, earth dogs, and metal merchants around the world. I, I like know. the bit where it's like a couple of overdubs, but who gives a shit or whatever. Yeah, yeah that's under, there under innocent exile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Which I respect Great the artwork. fact that they admitted it. Great artwork. Great artwork. I think that one I got later on in my life. Um, this one came from the next door neighbor, George Blaz. It was part of the infamous trade that I made in Record Store Tales Part 3, My First Kiss. The trade in which I got um, Hotter Than Hell by Kiss from a uh, neighbor named uh, Ian Johnson that I went to school with, which I then retraded to my next door neighbor, George Blaz, and I milked him for so many, so many things. And this mm -hmm. was one of them. Oh, I think wow. I got a Flight of Icarus single out of him that I, I gave back to him. And I traded back to him for something else at some point. I got a Black Sabbath Paranoid cassette. I got a Walkman. I got an Abbott and Costello record. Um, my vinyl copy of Brave New World. Oh, yes. You know, I think that's one of the few Maiden artworks to have two artists in the Yes, world. it is. That I can think of. I was just glad that Bruce was back with Adrian. Like, that was... Having Adrian back was more mind-blowing than Bruce. That was kind of like the one that nobody, nobody saw coming. Bruce coming back, sure. Okay, you could see that happening at some future time because, you know, they were always greater together than they were apart. But Adrian coming back kind of came out of nowhere, didn't it? Nobody saw that coming. Another one from the Bob Shipper collection, The Clairvoyant. Uh, rare kind of single in a way in that all the songs are live. Even the A-side. That was a first, wasn't it? Really, that's just more of a small EP. Really, it's a live EP. Yeah. Um, but it has a nice, nice gatefold. Hmm. These Maiden singles, they really went all out. They didn't, they, they took every single seriously, you know, from the artwork to the packaging and, you know, in as, as many cases as possible, giving the fans a little something extra. And we also always look forward to finding the little Derek Riggs logo on every record. We always look forward to that. My personal, personal favorite, wasted years oh yes eddie looking into his uh time machine very much inspired by uh doctor who and back to the future you can even see a tardis off there is in the, the, uh, the distance is the, is the one on the bottom left like inspired by dune oh no that's pyramids isn't it you can see pyramids you can see hell you can see the burning uh i think that mountain of crosses is somewhere from the number of the beast era you mm -hmm. can see a, a soccer field mm -hmm. Some dates. <coughs> oh, look, and the duet with InSync. You're, I, that's, yeah, I noticed that too. Mm. And if you notice underneath that, it's Pi 3.14159. Yes. <laughs> oh, I like Pi. And I, I always thought Bruce <laughs> was purposely trying to look like a goofball in this picture. Like, that's just not a good picture of Bruce at all. And there's, uh, <laughs> there he is, Rod Smallwood. We are on a mission from Rod. And that is because, of course, Sheriff of Huddersfield is on this album. <clears throat> um, that always meant cool. a lot to me, that single. Oh, here's another one from the Bob Shipper collection. Can I play with Madness? The one where Eddie's brain is made of mustard. <laughs> and uh, we always like the B-sides on this one. Cover oh, of Massacre yeah. by Thin Lizzy and a really... Massacre's really not on Best thing. of the B-sides. If you want that on CD, you have to get the first 10 years. Yeah, that's right. 
Um, I threw this in as well because this album, not this particular copy of this album, was my first exposure to Iron Maiden. There they are, track one, side one, Run to the Hills. Yep. I had uh, that it was cassette. cassette. Yep. It was cassette for me. And that's Record Store Tales Part 1, Run to the Hills. My discovery, really, not my discovery of my, of music, but my discovery of my love of music. Iron Maiden, Run to the Hills, this album. Masters of Metal has to be volume two, though. Oh, here's a good one. Bruce Dickinson, All the Young Dudes, 12-inch. Darkness Be My Friend, studio acoustic track, and Sin City, ACDC cover are the two B-sides. Nice. Bruce riding his hog there. Man of many talents. Um, and on the front, there's the little sticker from the album, Tattooed Millionaire. Huh. Speaking of which, here's the title track. Tattooed Millionaire featuring the B-sides. A Ballad of Mutt, which is quite funny. And uh, Winds of Change. There's Yannick. No Scorpions cover? Not a Scorpions cover, my friend. And uh, I don't think I'm going to... No, I don't think there's a... I thought maybe there was a poster, but I don't think we're going to go there. Oh, Out of the Silent Planet picture disc to accompany my uh, seven-inch single. Very nice. Wasted Years and Aces High on the B-side here. Very nice. Same ones as your CD single, Harrison? Uh, Wasted Years and Aces High, yes. The, two, the Trooper, also picture disc. Featuring live... 2003 and Murders in the Room Org Live 2005. Not the first Bruce Dickinson B side of Murders in the Room Org, as we saw another one on the Running Free single. Um, and as we all know, there's another single that you must acquire in addition to the vinyl and the CD to get all the versions of The Trooper. And that was the download only live in Reykjavik live version of The Trooper. Did I say that right? Reykjavik. You're asking us. <laughs> Uh, Wicker Man single. I, what I don't like is how it's it's never you can never get it aligned. <laughs> so huh. I just I just stopped trying. You can never get aligned. But I loved this album and this single very 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 much. Brilliant live versions of Power Slave and Killers on the B side here. Great single, great single. And uh, my last bit of Maiden vinyl is my unopened Fight. Six six six. Did you buy that on a Toronto trip? No, I With bought this at a local store. Okay, I feel like you. Okay, must have been something else. And there it is. This is a great live album too. But yes. um, that's beautiful. There she be. This is sort of like one of those uh, greatest hits tours. You know, yep. mm. great cover, and uh, still got the sticker on there. Limited edition double picture disc vinyl, and I've never seen the picture discs because mm -hmm. that's you silly. never opened it. Never opened it. Okay, and the only one that I didn't show is my Empire of the Clouds, which I apparently I missed when I was going through my vinyl. That's okay. That, I showed mine. Yeah, yeah. So we're all good there. We got that covered. Yeah. Um, and I think that is mostly that's it for my maiden vinyl. Uh, if we get around to going on another round for me, I will get my action figures. Ah. But I'm not guaranteeing that because it all depends on this, these test results. So we'll hand it over, I guess, to... Yeah, I've been here now. I'm not... Yeah, this is really screwy, but I'm going to be dropping out so often there's no point. Oh, yeah. Round three. First, I'm going to see if I can just get you a look at my Made in Japan. There it is. Mm. On the Very Next, nice. The Afterburn. Oh, yeah. Nice. My favorite ZZ Top album. I've got Look, and there's the Goblin King from The Hobbit sitting on his throne. Oh, and no, Pulse. Is. There's Pulse. You, can actually, you can't really see the flashing, but there's Pulse. Oh, I, I, okay, yes. I see your CD collection there, yeah. yeah. There's Pulse. You don't yep. see it as much because I moved the CD collection, but yeah. Anyway. I have that, but mine doesn't flash anymore. <laughs> so, round three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah mine's been flashing mine. since... Don't want like, leakage. Mine's been flashing since like May 2020 when I bought it or something. Same set of batteries up. I don't know. Batteries these days must be a lot better than back then because I think it was quoted at six months back then. Yeah. But um. All right. So I'm going to show off this. Ah, yes. From my, I'm I'm very surprised you managed to pick it out next to Menasaur the uh, last time I was on because it was literally just like this tan blob that high on the back of my screen. So that's the Super Seven Blind Box. 
You can only get that by buying and opening a blind box. His ass oh. is peculiarly round. <laughs> I never noticed that. Anyway. And we've reached that point of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> I ended up with three yeah, of them. I that's recall. what she said from you. Oh, that, well, yeah, that's what she said. Yeah. Well, anyway, so time for my last round of CDs. So this, again, made in Japan. This is a bootleg soundboard from the night after, I think. Um, the inserts and all, the picture disc is really cool. But the inserts oh, yeah. and everything are just, uh, you know, take scans of the actual album. It's got the full show from the night after, except I've got the fire is also included from Live at the Marquee, but it's not specified to be from Live at the Marquee. Um, there's a rare performance of Strange World here, which is probably the rarest track here. There's a guitar solo for Dave Murray at the end of Transylvania, like he does on Beast of a Hammersmith as well. And there's a drum solo. Did I say drum solo or guitar solo for Dave? Well, you said, you guitar. said guitar solo. Excellent. Yep. Good. And there's a, then there's a drum solo for Clive Burr in Another Life, which uh, halfway through the song, Diano just introduces uh, Mr. Clive Burr on drums. Which is something that Maiden would never do today, drum solos yeah. and guitar solos. Yeah. Never. So, when was the last time, Harrison, that they did a feature guitar solo or drum solo? The, was it I Peace believe the infamous Mission from Ari, Power Slave. Yeah, Peace no, of Mind. Power Slave, Peace of Mind, yes. Yep. Yes, that's as far as I know. There might have been some impromptu that something done during like a, uh, a tech malfunction at some point, but I have no Yeah, idea. that doesn't count. That doesn't count. Yeah, it's that doesn't a part count. Of the, it has to be a part of the planned set. Yes. So speaking of Beast of a Hammersmith, like more than five or six years ago now, I just bought this separate, the Beast of Hammersmith, because I wanted it. Really cool show. I wish the DVD version from the early days included the whole show, not half the show. Funny story, I was listening to Virtual Eleven when this came in the mail. I actually paused Virtual Eleven to go outside and get this, and then I resumed Virtual Eleven, finished Virtual Eleven, and then I put this on. <laughs> of course, you have to. That is living you can't, you can't stop listening to an album. No. You can't listen to an album and then stop and then listen to another album. <laughs> yes, especially if it's if it's one like Virtual Eleven. Anyway, so just very recently, in fact, just Thursday, these other two arrived. But I thought it was finally about time to complete the set. There it is, best of the B sides. Yeah, the case is busted up, but yeah, I'll just get a new case for it. Got some cool songs on here. It's more their covers and their studio B sides. Not not as many of the live ones are included. Massacre's left off for some inexplicable reason, which is a shame because that's a really good cover. Yeah, and they also left off. Um, yeah, the discs uh, are in I pristine condition. Way. Yeah, I live my way. Yeah, you're right as well. The discs are in pristine condition, but the cases seem better days. Uh, so I, I kind of have a question here, and this may be a stupid question, but where are these coming from? Where, are they coming from people who split up their Eddie's archive box set and sold the discs separately? Presumably, I went on. I I don't know. I bought Beast of Amersmith on eBay six years ago, just on its own. And um, yeah, I just recently went on eBay and found a seller from Denmark who had BBC archives and um, or that he had like bunch of like lots of different copies of these three discs. And I bought just BBC archives and Best of the B sides from him. And yep, speaking That's of BBC, how I got so, mine too. There it is. Yeah. That's how I got mine too. I think. I think I have all those. Yeah, so I, I own the complete Eddie's archive set without actually owning Eddie's archive. Hold on a second. You know, since you mentioned Denmark, I should mention my pal Thor in Denmark sent me a picture last year that I didn't know existed. And apparently I was quoted in an Iron Maiden book uh, from one of my reviews from my Iron Maiden review series. And I cannot remember any of the details. I think the book was in Danish. But I wish I had a screenshot of where I was quoted in this Iron Maiden book. So I, I'm proud to have been quoted in an Iron Maiden book somewhere in Denmark. That's really cool. <laughs> mm. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Hey, um, so, so I've been published twice now. I've been published in uh, Tim's book, Unspooled, and I've been published in an Iron Maiden book. Yeah. I forgot to mention, this one just recently got a reissue uh, on vinyl. On vinyl. Along yes, Deke was very days. excited. Three records, I believe. So it mm. turns out I only have this one. Okay. That's a good one, though. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah, Not at all. My, my case isn't broken. If you want to trade, <laughs> <laughs> no, I can I can easily buy some bl not blank cases, but you know spare cases from. Yep, they can be bought online. They can yeah. be had. They're not hard to find. They still make them. Yeah, 
Yeah. So yeah. this last thing I have to show off, this is the reason we are doing, or the impetus for me asking for this show. It is an incredibly obscure thing. It's not Iron Maiden, but it is Maiden adjacent. I'd be very surprised if you'd both actually recognize what this is, but at the same time, if Mike did, I would not be surprised because that's just Mike. Do you know what this is? Um, well, they're obviously spoofing the Peace of Mind cover. This is an I Iron Maiden tribute album. The band is called Food for Thought. And depend, <laughs> depending on which side of the owl spine you look at, the album's either called What Are We Doing This For? Or, now that's what I call Kin Music. <laughs> and what oh, this wait. is, it's it's um, a couple of Swedish guys, as well as a, a selection, a handful of guest Swedish musicians. And they're covering all Iron Maiden songs, obviously, but they're covering them not like you'd expect. Like for... Basically, they do them in all different styles. So Twilight Zone is jazzy with horns. Um, there's, there's some ballad he takes on a fair few of them. Uh, the, there's a minute of the Mercenary done in the style of the Bee Gees before, <laughs> a, before um, it's kicked into gear by a, um, shanty -esque, a heavy metal shanty-esque version of the Trooper. One of my, one of my personal favourites is Fortunes of War done in an 8-bit Nintendo style. Oh. And the incredibly jazzy Blood on the World's Hands, which also includes a cameo by Joe Yowser for some scatting, which I think you'll find critics of the song will agree was exactly what it was missing. Um, there's Wildest Dreams, as if done by Motorhead. There's well, that Future... would actually be okay. That would actually be okay. Yeah. There's Future Real, done in the style of ACDC with a really good Bon Scott impersonator that is really one of the highlights of the disc. It's such a good take on the song. There's... Um... They, they even cover stuff like Burning Ambition on here, which is not something you'd see on a on a regular Maiden trivia. It's it's a, such a really really fun listen. It's yeah, wow. that's something, Harrison. Yeah, it's from two thousand and three. Just these Swedish guys got together. Uh, Henrik Johans Johansson and Matthias, that's Vibe Merchant Rain Holson. Those are the producers. In two thousand and three, uh, Wildest Dreams would have been brand new. Mm. Yeah, front cover artwork by Eric Gustafsson. Um, yeah, I, I actually like what they've done with the disc here. Let me just put it the right way up. It's uh, similar. It's not a picture disc, but I really do like how they've done it. That is really nice. Yeah, the nice, yeah. Very like a clean line drawing of the cover. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Very clean. Yeah, I like it. This is an amazingly fun listen. I love. I love putting this one off. You know, Jazzy Iron Maiden, Motorhead Iron Maiden, Bee Gees Iron Maiden, ACDC Iron Maiden. It's it's great fun. The Some of those don't sound like they should work. No. The, the Bee Gees one surprisingly does. Well, take your word for it. Even though you're the jazz, the jazzy ones Australian. really work. But yeah, then again, I, I listen to Virtual Eleven instead of Beast Over Hammersmith. So can you really trust what I say? I'm glad to have my own built-in contrarian on this show. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> anyway, that is all I have for this show. So I will throw it back to Aaron now. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not thinking I would be able to sit through the entire eight-bit track. I think I. Would well, it's not the entire song. It's, oh. it's only like three minutes. Like it's like a truncated. Three version. minutes is still a lot. So, <laughs> um, you guys have probably seen these already. I think Mike, you even have one. I framed it. This is the menu. Yeah, I have it somewhere. I do. <laughs> this mm. is the menu from the ACC, the Air Canada Center, when we went to see Iron Maiden for Book of Souls. That's twenty sixteen. Is there heart on there? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah that's what that is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that yeah? Can I order that? No. Uh, does the, does had... the walk on Eddie come and deliver it to me? I think I it was thirty just... bucks, but I had the classic double cheeseburger. Which uh, wasn't bad, but um, that's a whole story. Actually, I think I told that before about how yeah. there's there's another side too. But we we had tickets and they were at the back of the bowl, so the band was going to be this big. Yeah. And then um, one of the guys we went with had a buddy that was working there in the kitchen of the restaurant that was just above the crowd, and he came and got us and took us up. And we had railing seats overlooking the crowd. The band was still this big, but um we had our own bathroom in the restaurant we had table service 
uh, he brought us a free appetizer just to say, Hey, cool. Thanks for coming. Um, and it was, I mean, just made the experience so much better. Uh, and I have here, you were just talking about these Harrison. Um, I have my, my hard, hard cover. Mm. I have my book of souls. I have my Book of Souls uh, edition. I That's have the first the... time I've seen the Book of Souls track list, I think, in all one go without the disc breaks. I think. I don't. I, I, it's been a while since I looked at the back of the Book of Souls. Is it just like that, or is it split by disc? Or That's the same as mine. I don't know. I don't have... Yeah. This is the, my only copy of the album. <laughs> Sorry, I've got... No, yeah, me too. Me too. I don't have that album. I have that oh, one, uh, Book of Souls Live and Sinjutsu all in the same. Oh, no, no. It's it's exactly the same. I thought they broke it up. Okay. Disc. Yeah, Never and mind. I have I have the live chapter that goes with it. Yeah. As, yeah. In oh. the hardcover book. I don't see a point in buying two copies, you know? Yeah. Get, no. the, get one or the other and you're happy. Unless you want vinyl as well. Yeah. Sorry to derail you, but just yeah, yeah. on the topic of live chapter... You see, yeah. there's the Book of Souls and there's live chapter. Now, yeah, you see, the Book of Souls you. is written in white. Yeah, it bugs you. But here you it's know. written in red and the word live chapter is written in white. Yes. I know. When it should be the other way around. Harrison, they don't they don't care about us. No, 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 no. I got to tell you, I have a book series that I've been reading and she's put out about seven books and they were all white and all, like the covers were all hardcover. They were white, they all lined up, they matched and then... Like the seventh book that she put out, it's bright freaking yellow. And in, it's the um, same size. In Jen's <sighs> DVD collection, she was collecting. Every year she got The Simpsons seasons for Christmas. Yeah. And she had like the first eight seasons. They're all beautiful, kind of like shiny book, like very, very colorful. And then they changed the cases to those weird heads. I know where and you're going. Everybody right? got so pissed off. They're like, yeah. this screws up my whole collection. I'm like, yeah, yeah. But it's kind of cool. You know, it's a cool head. And they're like, these fucking suck. <laughs> and they did. They did. They got and smushed. When I used to sell them at, at uh, the thrift shop, they were really hard to shelve and they all yeah. broke because yeah. people are animals and everything else. So even uh, just I, regular shelfware took its toll. I also have the hardcover of the legacy of the beast. That one. I don't, that one I have um, jewel case, uh, Knights of the dead in Mexico city. Great album, which is a very pretty looking thing with the pictures on the back. Yeah. And then I also have, of course, the hardcover. Sinjutsu. Sinjutsu. So, and you know what? I've been listening to this. Me too. And I, I played it today. And you know what? The I parchment. Like... The parchment. That's my song, man. Well, that one and um oh god, I'm blanking. Oh, of course, on the inside. I said, Oh, here, I'll get the track list. It's in freaking Japanese. Yeah, good, good. What do I know? My version good. doesn't even have the track list on the bank. Um yeah, it is the parchment. You're right. Not yeah. Nothing. I just I I loved it when I reviewed it, and I kind of set it aside. Yeah, I didn't play too. it a lot. It's the same thing you're talking about, right? But I played it recently. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, yeah, let's go. You know. Uh, and the last thing I have, I need your help. Okay. This is the last things I have. I only have three Iron Maiden vinyls, and you saw one. I have the Empire of the Cloud. Yeah. Clouds, plural. I also have two copies, original old whatevers. Of number of huh, the beast. Nice. Okay. So I probably just bought them because. 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 Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, this one was $4.63 at Dr. Disc when it was sold originally. Um, and it has no liner, but it has the. Um, mm -hmm. oh, down. It has the track list and everything. And then on the back, mm. it just has that in the center. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the other one does too. But I, for some something in my head told me there was a difference between these two. Now, this next one sold for $9.49 at Zeller's. <laughs> if you remember Zeller's, Mike. I would have bought, I would have flipped through those. I would have seen it. Yeah. Um, and this one has... The lyrics. Okay, yeah, yep. Yeah, that's how I remember it. And then the 
pictures on the uh, contact sheets. Yep, that's how I remember it with the photo and, strips. Yeah, and then this one also has. Okay. That. One, two, yeah. And that. Okay. So I don't think they're different. I think just this one. I think one you're missing the, a piece. Yeah. Yeah, I think the first one is missing the liner thing. But they're both immaculate. Like they're both. That's awesome. They look like they've never been played. Um, and I don't know why anyone would get rid of that. But I mean, maybe it's not. I mean, as far as Iron Maiden albums go, um, you know, this is like some of their biggest songs are on here, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like there's the track list if anybody wants to see it. If anyone doesn't have it committed to memory. Yeah, yeah forget it. Forget it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that, I just, I I can't see any other discernible difference in the two. Um, yeah, just this, this one is in nicer shape, I think. And it's still got the plastic on it even. Is the sticker uh, directly on the vinyl on the left one and on the plastic on the right one, or is it uh, the price sticker? The price sticker is directly on the cover of this one. That's the worst one. Yeah. Yeah, and but then, you don't even try to remove the sticker at that point because you're no. just recording yeah. death. Uh, and this one, if I can get my finger... Oh, no. the um, Yeah, that's good. The yeah. sticker is on the plastic of this one. Yeah, that's the keeper. Yeah. Well, I'm keeping Good old that's Zellers. One that gets framed. And... I'm keeping them both. That's, that's, <laughs> but, you know, Zellers, we miss you. Yeah. We miss classic Zellers. New Zellers sucks. This, but, um, uh, oh, there's another Zellers? I think they just think they did a revival and with the restaurant and everything. You know what? Don't even ask me. I don't even. Oh, know. okay. <laughs> the, only, the only other thing I've got that is kind of fun, and I think, I don't remember if I put this on the blog or not, but I got this guy. Oh, it's animal. Oh, yeah, I remember it's that. Lego. Oh, is it? Of animal, yeah. It is. Well, Harrison, you could use that drum kit. I've got my own drum kit made up. Yeah, I know I've seen it. I've seen yeah, the it. little um the little drum head moves here. So oh, that's of course cool. animal's always so hard on his kit. Who's the drummer of Motley Crue, right? Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee. All right, we yeah, okay. We need to we need to feature a Motley Crue show. In one of the chapters, so I can do the massive drum. Okay, like okay. A... Uh, the only problem is I don't know anybody who likes Motley Crue uh, except for Snowman, and I don't really have much of a Crue collection. It's like I don't even like them anymore. I think they're assholes, actually. But I have... no, it doesn't have to be a full chapter. It just so, that could be. You know... Oh man, Marco, Marco, Polo. Oh wow. Okay, so I hope you can see this. Um, Marco just sent me a message. He said he was just on Grant's walk, Rock Warehouse tonight. They were talking about Mystique uh, standing on the firing line. And yes. apparently he gave me a shout out on the show. But not only that, oh, he spelled my name wrong. <laughs> he spelled my name wrong. Look, look, uh, I, I got I to gotta, I gotta message him. <laughs> MikeDelano.com. <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. That's funny. Oh, Marco. His heart's in the right place, though. That's that's cool. Uh, I got a message here from Jen. She's been released from the hospital. Her jaw is not broken. Hooray! Oh, hey! Hey, hey, hey! Uh, yeah, yeah. John Clauser here. We're going to get him on again. Uh, or we're going to get him on with Spenny, I hope, in the future. But, yeah. Oh, my Dude, God. So good I, we saw those seven inch singles at Sam the Record Man downtown and Dr. Disc downtown. And I, I, we basically Bob Shipper bought them all and I bought them all off Bob Shipper, but there was still a whole bunch that we don't have. So I ended up getting the, the first 10 years box set on CD. Um, guys, it has been a pleasure tonight. Yes. I, uh, mm -hmm. my, my voice is starting to go and it is time for me to call it a night. Jen is in a cab on her way home from the hospital. Good. There are no no broken bones, but she tells me that I better get ready for. I'm not going to like what I see. Well, apparently, her jaw is completely black, and uh, she says her lip is worse. So I am just, uh, yeah. It has been it has been a hell of a spring. It has. I I thought in my 
naivety i thought that the winter from hell that I, that we had would be supplanted by spring and summer of paradise but it just it hasn't worked out that way my friends and i'm trying hard i am trying really hard i'm getting out there and i'm like walking yep. at my lawn on my lunch hour every day i'm trying to drink less soda and more water yep. and uh you know i'm doing my best here but uh, the last week or so i feel like i've been fighting a losing battle and uh <laughs> Stay strong, brother. I'm trying. It. I'm trying. But thanks for uh, thanks for being with me tonight. Now, next week, Aaron, I don't know if you're familiar with the Arkells. Of course. I saw them in oh. concert. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Are you free next week at 7? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> I'll have to look. I'll email you. Okay. Well, keep yeah. it in mind because uh, having you by my side would be very helpful because next week I'm going to be talking Ooh. to an Arkells super fan from Twitter yeah. named Nurse Cat. She has seen the Arkells numerous times. She's got tons of pictures of her hanging out with Max and the guys. Yeah. I believe she used to sell merch for them. So we're going to have Nurse Cat on next week at seven to talk about the Arkells, oh. a band that I'm just sort of right now kind of getting into. I am not an expert at all. You don't have to be. Okay. You don't have to be. You just have to, you just have to be able to talk. Oh, and I'm a, I am a fan. I mean, seeing them live made me go, whoa, yeah, those guys have got it. And they weren't even the, uh, <laughs> The closer, not the great cat. No, that is a guitar player. (laughs) Yeah, they weren't even the closer. That was at the horseshoe in Toronto when we saw them. Okay, so if you are free next week at seven or anytime after seven, I'd like to do an hour with Nurse Cat just talking about the Arkells, a band that I'm just starting to get to. I I know nothing, I've been doing my my reading. I have two albums plus a third that's coming to me now. And that's it. And I want to talk to her about seeing them live. I want to talk to her about what they mean to her because they're obviously one of her favorite bands ever. Yep. And thank you, Mike. I really appreciate you tuning in, even though you're not well-versed in Maiden. I don't know if you like the Arkells or not, but I sure do. Yeah. Yeah, they're 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 good. They're very strong. You're going to dig it, Mike. Cool. Well, also, I will say before you go super fast, at some point... And all of this has happened, so there's no anything. But some point before the snow flies, you and I need to be in the same place at the same yeah, time. This summer, because, we're, t- we're making plans. Okay, because I have stuff for you that I cannot mail. Hey, thanks, Mike. Really appreciate that. Um, it's I, I'm just... She's going to be home any minute now, and I'm just kind of getting myself ready. Yep. And on that note, we always like to go out on a song. And Ooh. since Aaron is here, I think there's only one song we can go out on. Don't you agree? Ace of Spades. <laughs> that isn't what I was gonna say. Oh well. What's, what's your catchphrase besides Wahoo? What's your catchphrase? Uh, that's what she said. Uh, what's your other catchphrase? I don't know. Uh, that has, that has a song. There you go. Yeah, I knew that. So what it was. here it is. It's by T Bone Erickson, Uncle Meat, and the entire yeah. community. This is a song dedicated to that man right there, Aaron. And if you can show up next week, I'd love to have you. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Awesome. So we'll Harrison. see you next week, folks. Thank you, sir. So good to see you again, Aaron. Mike, thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. Take care. Have a great night. This is Community. Turn it up.
Welcome, Nighthawks. We've been expecting you. The hour's late, but the party is just getting started. I'm Alistair Kovacs, your host for a sophisticated little soiree with jazz, stimulating conversation, beautiful ladies, more jazz. Look, it's Charlie, sincerely one of the best white non-union jazz pianists in the entire city, top five. Charlie, play some of those notes you know I like. 